Hello, my name is Megan Sapola, and today I will be presenting on a case study for my Nutrition Across the Lifespan class titled Obesity in Adolescence. We will be reviewing our patient, who is Jane, her family, an assessment, recommendations, and a three-day food menu. Jane is a 14-year-old female. She currently weighs 152.9 pounds. She is 62 inches tall, and her weight has steadily been increasing by 10 to 15 pounds every year for the past six years. She's being referred to see a dietitian by her primary care physician for weight management due to this weight gain. Jane's family. So she lives at home with her two parents and her two younger siblings. Her family history includes her mother having hyperlipidemia and is obese. Her father has type 2 diabetes and is also obese. Genetics is a risk factor for one being overweight and or obese. So since both Jane's mother and father are both obese, this increases the risk that Jane and her siblings will also be due to being genetically predisposed to obesity. Her parents have reported that they often eat out at fast food restaurants to save time and money because they have also reported that they often run out of money for food by the end of the month. So this does mean Jane's family is considered food insecure. Jane does consume lunch at school. Assessment. So prior to being seen by the dietitian, Jane's primary care physician did have labs drawn, which included a CBC, a fasting glucose test, and a lipid panel, which the results of all those labs can be seen in the attached image. So a review shows that Jane's sodium, potassium, cholesterol, and triglyceride levels are normal, but she does have a fasting glu glucose, which is high and is considered to be an indicator for prediabetes in adolescents. Her HDL which is called considered the good cholesterol level was 36, which is borderline low for females. And an HDL level should be high, but if it is low, this is often due to overconsumption of foods with saturated fat, if they are overweight or obese, and a lack of physical activity. Now, the LDL level, which is the bad cholesterol, was 113, and this is considered borderline high. A LDL level should be the opposite of HDL, so it should be low. But if it is high, it is due to excessive caloric intake and overconsumption of foods with saturated fat, cholesterol, sugar, and refined carbohydrates. Taking a look at Jane's BMI, it was calculated out to be 27.96. And once plotted on the CDC growth chart, you can see that Jane's BMI is above the 95th percentile. Therefore, Jane is considered obese. Now, a review of Jane's three-day food diary, which was entered into chronometer. It did reveal that Jane is over-consuming in all categories of calories, protein, carbohydrates, and fat. So taking a look at day one, she was consuming 3,412 calories, 101 grams of protein, 391 grams of carbs, and 154 grams of fat. Micronutrients on that day, she had excessive amounts of sodium, but was deficient in magnesium, vitamin E, and vitamin D. Day two, 
she consumed 2,834 calories, 144 grams of protein, 294 grams of carbs, and 120 grams of fat. She once again consumed sodium in excessive amounts, but also vitamin B3, and she was deficient in vitamin A, vitamin E, and vitamin D. Day three, she consumed 2,452 calories, 72 grams of protein, 290 grams of carbs, and 106 grams of fat. Excessive amounts continues to be sodium, and deficient amounts this day was zinc, magnesium, copper, vitamin B6, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K, and vitamin D. Moving on to recommendations for Jane, a first step would be education with Jane and her family, as she is an adolescent living at home with her parents. Therefore, her parents must be willing to adjust their own current lifestyle as they do the shopping, cooking, etc. for food. Education would include what a healthy diet entails, how to adjust healthy meals to fit their budget, Nutrient needs for Jane, which will be discussed in the next slide, how to read a food label, and what nonprofit programs are available to them. For diet, I would recommend increasing fruit and vegetable intake. It has been shown that households that have more fruit and vegetables is associated with having a higher intake of these foods as well as a lower BMI. Meanwhile, unhealthy foods in the house is associated with higher intakes of fast food. I would recommend decreasing sugar-sweetened beverages, as in Jane's food diary, she did often consume some sort of Coke product or a sweetened tea. I would also recommend decreasing consumption of foods high in saturated fat, which would include limiting going to fast food restaurants. Exercise, I would recommend increasing physical activity to at least 60 minutes per day for Jane. This would include participating in sports, gym class, etc. Behavior, limiting screen time to no more than two hours daily outside of academics. Participating in family meals or family activities related to this. And including Jane in food purchasing and preparation. If Jane's parents were to do this, it has been shown to be associated with positive outcomes for overall better health and nutrition status, including dietary markers. All these recommendations of diet, exercise, and behavior would assist Jane with losing weight as it is recommend recommended that Jane lose one to two pounds a week by her next primary care physician appointment in six months. Now, Jane's nutrient needs. I did use the USDA interactive DRI for healthcare professionals to calculate these out, as well as my plate plan. So, Jane should consume 1,890 calories, 59 grams of protein, 53 to 74 grams of fat, and 213 to 308 grams of carbs per day. My plate recommends two cups of fruit, two and a half cups of vegetables, six ounces of grains, five and a half ounces of protein, and three cups of dairy per day for Jane as well. Now, programs that could assist Jane and her family, the first being the Supplemental Nutrition Assistant Program, which is also titled SNAP. This is a program that helps to reduce poverty and food insecurity by providing food benefits to low-income families to supplement their grocery budget to be able to better afford nutritious foods. Along with SNAP is SNAP-Ed, which is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program Education. This would help educate Jane's parents on how to shop for and cook healthy meals and even steer them towards a more physically active lifestyle. Now, it was said that Jane does consume her lunch at school, but we are unaware of if she pays for this 
or maybe she is already participating in the National School Lunch Program. But if not, this is a program that provides lunches at low cost or free for children who qualify, which this would help relieve some of the burden to Jane's parents as they are experiencing not having enough money for food for the end of the month. The school breakfast program is a program that provides breakfast at low cost or free for children as well who qualify. So the National School Lunch Program and School Breakfast Program are meant to meet the federal nutrition requirements, which are put in place to meet dietary specifications for calories, sodium, and saturated fat to limit the risk of chronic disease. And Jane would be eligible for both these programs if she were to be receiving SNAP benefits. Now, taking a look at Jane's three-day menu that I came up with and entered into Chronometer, I did try to keep some similar foods that Jane was already consuming, such as the Jimmy Dean sandwiches. So here I did enter in a Jimmy Dean Delight, which is on an English muffin instead of a biscuit. I did also keep her snack the same so popcorn but without the butter and then on this day you can see that I have kept her waffles but I did just de decrease the amount so I did only give her two instead of her normally consuming her four waffles meanwhile there were some items I completely omitted like her coke sweet tea potato chips and other items and replaced them with water unsweetened tea, pretzels, and fruit. Thank you.